This man, 334 NRL games, 20 origins for Queensland, 15 tests for the Kangaroos. What a decorated career. When you read it all back like that, it has been some career, and there's a kick to come, Brian. Mm. Return to sender. The Bronco himself, Ben Hunt, is back where it all started. Welcome to the run home with Joel and Fletch, Benny. Ah, thanks for having me on, fellas, and appreciate the nice intro there, mate. How do you feel, mate? Do you feel like uh, a lot of weight's off your shoulders now? Yeah, I do a bit, definitely. Um, you know, the last couple of weeks have been pretty crazy, to be honest, and, you know, very stressful on work, working out whether we're going to return up there or stay down here in Sydney, but definitely glad with the decision we've made and how happy to move on now and get stuck in. So, Benny, the Broncos have won out. How close were you to staying in in Sydney, and was it going to be with the Chooks? Mate, we we're very close to staying in Sydney. Um, you know, literally came down to that day that you know we got to a point where we just had to make a decision, and in the end, it you know the Broncos won out, and my heart just wanted to return back there, mate, and, and finish my career where it all started. And you know, there was a couple of clubs that were options here in Sydney. Um, you know, we we kind of had to make the decision whether we we're going to pursue a club here or return to Broncos, and um, yeah, the Broncos were the final answer. Wow. Uh, well, mate, I'm glad to hear that's happened for you. So what about uh, the chat with Madge? How did that all play out? Yeah, I caught up with Madge a couple of times. Um, you know, we you know, early in the process, caught up with him, went around, had a coffee, and, you know, he just told me about his career and, you know, where he'd been and what he's done and, you know, what he thinks the Broncos are capable of doing and what you know, he expects from a Bronco and what he's going to bring to the club. And um, I was really excited about it, mate. It's... He's a guy I've never worked with, but you look at his career, he's had success at you know, NRL level, state level, you know, coach New Zealand to some success. So I'm really excited to work with him. What about what position? Uh, you know, we know Ezra may, may or may not be uh, starting yep. uh, round one. Where, ha- where does he think your best position will be at the Bronx? Yeah, mate, off the jump, it'll be in the halves. Yep. Um, you know, obviously, with what's going on with Ezra is very uncertain and you know, he said, you know, I'll slot straight into the halves there. But long term, you know, if ever Ezra gets back, you know, you look at the spine of you know, Reese at the back, Ezra and Renault in the halves, and me at nine, it's a pretty handy spine. So um, we'll just, you know, play it, you know, along as, as the year goes, I guess. But obviously, it'll be in the halves to start with. Benny, what, what do you feel your best position? Because I think, I mean, you can obviously <laughs> play seven, but I think you are a superstar at nine. Obviously, you've got to do a lot more work defensively, but what do you feel is your best position? Oh, to be honest, mate, I haven't really thought a lot about what I think would be the best, my best position is. Like, I enjoy playing the halves the most. I like playing hooker as well. Like, I, I enjoy that. I feel like I'm very capable there, but um, in myself, I just really enjoy playing in the halves, and, you know, that's where I've always played my footy, but, um, you know, a lot of people keep telling me that hooker probably is my best position, but... Yeah, it's it's really hard. Benny, um, back on Madge Maguire. So you've actually been a big nemesis and opponent with him because at Australian level, mm. he, him coaching New Zealand, you playing for Queensland, him coaching New South Wales, NRL yeah. level, of course. So this time, finally get to partner up. Yeah, he's got a few wins over me and a fair few of those as well, unfortunately. But yeah, it's great to be actually partnering up with him. And like I said, I'm I'm really looking forward to working under him and seeing what he's all about. What about these spew buckets that we keep seeing? Mm. Uh, now you've been around a long time, and you've had—I I imagine you would have had some awful preseason training. Are, have you actually started at the Bronx yet? No, nah, mate, uh, I haven't started back. Uh, I was actually talking to him on the phone about an hour ago, and the day I'm coming back, he's got the boys doing some sand dunes apparently somewhere. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, I've seen this—I've never seen the actual spew buckets, but I've definitely seen some guys spew at training before. Yeah, the spew buckets. Are, are, <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking of a of a sort of a business idea. Mm. How much do you reckon Reese Walsh's <laughs> spew would go for? I mean, they're selling. Oh yeah. They sell like uh, air from a Kanye mm. a Kanye West concert. Yes. Air. I reckon there's a, a bit of a market there for... Uh, I'd pay something for Reese Walsh's spew. Thoughts, yeah. uh, Shug? Oh, well, mate, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I, uh, bet, I bet you would. There, there was a banana. <laughs> there was a banana this week. Yes. There was duct tape to a wall. It sold for $6.2 oh, million. Dollars. 6.2? 6.2 million. Whose banana was that? Uh, I don't know whom, but... Where, uh, where had it $6. been? $6.2 million. 
So there you go. Six point two. Are you what? Okay, Benny. What about Origin? What about your representative career? Have you made a decision on what you're going to do? Did Madge hint at you saying, "Look, if you come here, we'd like you to hang up your representative boots," or you can just do you make your own decision? Nah. No, no, not at all, mate. He he encourages that. He said, obviously, if players are getting picked to play State of Origin, they're playing a high caliber football. So he encouraged it, mate, and it's all yeah, all fine with it. And you know, as long as I'm healthy, playing good footy and yeah, feel like I can definitely contribute for Queensland, then I'll be happy to play. So, Benny, my calculations, so you've signed a two-year deal there with the Broncos, everything yeah. going to plan, by the end of those two years, Brian, this man we're speaking to will pretty much only have one man in front of him in the history of the game for most games played at National Rugby League level. Yes. That man would be Cameron Smith. Benny, when you think about this, the young boy from Rockhampton, <laughs> your old man played a, a little bit of football for Central Queensland, but to think that that's how it can all finish up, that, that, that is quite the story yeah. and what you've achieved at representative level, which I waxed lyrically about before. But can you really believe this is where this young man's career from Rockhampton has got to? It actually just gives me chills when you mm. spread that out this and it's, you know, something that I never dreamt could be possible. Um, just as a young kid from central Queensland, I dreamt about playing NRL, but never do I think that it, something like this would happen and, yeah, to be if I do obviously touch wood, stay healthy, and get to you know three hundred and whatever games it is, um, yeah, I'm going to be very proud of of my achievements. The many many fields when you're driving on a weekend, and, and my hairs are standing up thinking about it. You know, the many many fields of the many many of these young kids who want to play first grade, and then of those who are lucky enough to play Jersey flag, SG ball, the Mountaminga Cup, all those sorts of things, mm. and then you do play first grade, and then you possibly end up as the second of all time, mate. It is a, a crazy, crazy achievement. Naturally, the icing on the cake would be a Broncos premiership. Do you feel that can be achieved in the two years back there? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely do, mate. Um, that was part of my process as well of trying to work out where I wanted to go. I wanted to go somewhere where I felt like we could have some success. And, you know, I definitely think the talent's there at Brisbane. Um, you know, myself coming in and Madge coming in and the new coaching staff there, I, I definitely think it's... the you know, the, the ingredients are there. We've just got to pull it all together. Benny, was it hard to, to leave the Dragons? I mean, you'd been there for so long, seven seven or eight years yeah. there. Have you got any uh, favourite moments when you've been at the Dragons? My, my favourite moments at the Dragons were probably, you know, Anzac Day game, to be honest. Like, that game mm. is up there with any, like, NRL finals game or any, like, it's... Just the whole day, the build up, you know, even when you lose them, it's you sort of go home with a bit of a smile on your face. Like mm. it's just such an, an amazing day that um, that's something I'm probably going to miss the most, I reckon. Yeah. Well, it puts it, in, it puts it into perspective that it's only a game of footy when you, yeah. Because you know, I'd imagine oh, when you, you learn about what goes on with, with all our brave uh, yep. men and women servicing. So I can understand why you say that. Like even if, if you do get dusted, um, yeah, it, 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 Special, it, it, it sort of puts it all into perspective. Hey, Benny, what's the uh, the moving status? Have you moved yet or have you packed up or when's the big the big <laughs> move date? No, mate, not moved yet. No, no. I've still got to organise all that. All that I only agreed to, to sign two days ago, so mm. I've got, got a bit of planning to do, find a house and, yeah, get the family all sorted out, mate. Oh, you'll be able to pay that out of the uh, the console of your yeah. car just with cash. What, oh, uh, Benny, what is – how far is it from Brisbane Airport – to Dingo. Oh, geez, it'd probably be 800, 850 k's. But where are you? More. Where would you fly to? So you go from Brisbane, You'd fly to Rockhampton. Yeah, and then it's about an hour and a half west of Rockhampton. Right, and is that there's a pub there? I know. I think we've discussed this before. There's, is there a pub? Two pubs? There's, there's a there's a pub, a service station, and a corner store. Is there a bakery? Is there a pie? No. Um, oh, you could probably get a pie at the corner store, maybe, if you're lucky, depending on what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> Better get in early. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, look, plenty of questions coming through. Jamie said, on behalf of your Dewsbury, West Yorkshire, UK listeners, six or nine, gracias. We've already, we've already answered that one. Uh, from League Scene, hey, Ben, Brisbane have many good young future prospects in their top 30, i.e. Moser. Kobe Black, etc. Given you learned off Lockyer and the like, how will you help bring the best out of the future stars yep. of the club? Oh wow, that's a serious question. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's a gr- great question and and something I've had a couple of conversations about with Madge and you know, helping mentor those young guys. You know, obviously, 
like we touched on there, Fletch I've played a lot of nine. A lot of people think that's my preferred position, but you know, they've got some really good talented young kids coming back in the halves and in hooker and you know, part of my role is helping develop those guys. Um, you know, you know, in two years' time, eighteen months' time, those guys are gonna be playing, I could be playing beside them or, you know, mm. helping them build the future of that club and that's something that I'm definitely looking forward to doing and something that I'd I'd like to keep doing, you know, once my footy career is done. Did you meet? Um, just going back to, uh, did you did you catch up with Coach Robinson at the Chooks and and uh, Seraldo at the Bulldogs? I'd imagine would have, you would have spoken to the Bulldogs as well. Yep, yeah, had some brief conversations with them, mate. Um, it was sort of early in the piece. Just had some, you know, little conversations about you know what the club looks like and and different things. But you know, it all come down to us making a decision first whether we wanted to be in Sydney or, mm. or return to the Broncos. Right. They won out. I'd, I'd love to know. Like you would have got to see the whole buffet of how the clubs are presenting. I'd I'd yeah. love to get the Ben Hunt power record. <laughs> yeah, with, with, which Did clubs they, wine no and dine the best? Yeah, Did they take you to the China, Chinese? No Canterbury take you to China? Do you have Chinese with Gus? No, I didn't get didn't no. get wine and dine on the Chinese. Jeez, okay. who gets that? What about Robbo? The trick? Did Robbo bring out? Because Robbo's big go is the pizza and French wine at his joint. Did did you do that, or you just went to oh. the bistro at East Leagues? Jeez, I missed out on the French wine too. I was getting shafted. <laughs> uh, good. I'm just having a look at this, right? So, um, and I haven't quickly done the maths, but Kobe Black, this youngster who you refer to, mm. yep. he was pretty much born when you started your first great career. That's that's oh, I how. Don't say that. yeah, yeah, but but that's that's how great your career has been. That you may be yeah. playing with um, players who were pretty much as born when you started your first great career. Yeah, no, it is crazy, mate. Actually, pre-season this year just gone, we had a couple of young guys come in that were born the year I finished school. Which, <laughs> yeah, made, made me feel very oh, old. That's, I mean, you, you don't miss many games, Benny. What What is it about about you? Do you, do you look after yourself? Do you, do you drink during the season? I know a lot of players don't drink, but what? Because yeah. you, you're playing in a position where, I mean, you're playing 80 minutes every yeah. every week. Is it yeah. or is it just um, is it just genetics? Mate, I, honestly, I reckon I'd have to put it down to genetics. Like, it's you ought to have a lot of luck, I know. But, you know, I've seen multiple players that, you know, had three knee reconstructions in the space of four years and things like that. And, you know, I, you know, a bit of luck, a bit of genetics and, you know, probably just being a halfback most of the time, not trying to tackle anyone, getting out of the way helps. But, um, yeah, like, it's I do look after myself, but, like, I'm not, you know, a maniac about it. And I, yeah. you know, do my ice bars and whatnot and still drink during the season, but not as heavy as I used to. But um, I think it's a lot of luck, mate. It really is. Okay. All right. In two years' time, you've won the premiership at the Broncos. What's Benny Hunt doing now? Is he on the farm or is he coaching? Is he working yeah. in the media? What's what, what do you want to do? Mate, I'd like to have a little mixture of both. You know, doing a bit of halves coaching at the Broncos would be something that I'd would really like to do, just helping our young guys develop their game and, yeah, spending my afternoons riding a horse down on the farm. Oh, yes. That sounds good. You could be the next clerk of the course like um, Billy. Like Billy Slater. Did you watch any of that, <laughs> Benny? Did you see oh, Billy? Mate, he, was ex- he was exceptional. He was How so good was he? Is there anything he can't do? I oh, know. It's sort of annoying oh, mate, me. mate, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, it's giving me the shits too. Yeah. It, it looked like he... I mean, he was just. I mean, he's a great interviewer. Duck anyway. to water. Yeah, and he's just there, just yeah. riding along with Robbie Dolan. Good looking, fit. Good looking. On a horse. How is he in the uh, in the showers? He hasn't got it all, has he, Benny? <laughs> Please don't tell no, me. Yes. Look, is he, is I want to say he's a very lucky man. Oh, oh gosh. Good on you, Bill. He's got Harry Grant. Good I, when on I you, saw Bill. Harry Grant, so Harry Grant obviously is a yeah. terrific player, can surf. Yeah. Good looking, Roos, and I thought there's no way. So I followed him into urban surf or surfing, and then I went into the showers and I looked. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it all. Has he? Absolutely got it all. Well, what is it with you, Queensland? Yeah. You rank Queenslanders. You've all got well, good. No, no, no. I've, I've nah. stalked you anyway, too. <laughs> I'm zooming in you right <laughs> at the moment. Uh, hey, Benny, what, what, what are you doing in your downtime? <laughs> How would you spend the break? What's what's the plan? Mate, just family time. Yeah. Uh, I was obviously away for the representative stuff for a month. And, yeah, just been back doing a few school runs, doing the drop-offs in the morning and Hanging out with the family, mate, and, and now going to be organising a move, so not too much. Can I ask you, Benny, because it, it seemed to – you were the most wanted on the market, and it, and it seemed to take a long time. A, how hard yep. was that? And B, what, why did it take so long? Mate, it was actually probably just because we couldn't make a decision. Like yeah. We were really just on the fence about making the right decision and what's best for our family. And mm. it, Yeah, it really just – 
pushed out a bit longer than it should have and it was really just because of myself and, and my family and yeah, trying to iron out what we think's best long term for us. Benny Hunt, we look forward to uh, speaking to you throughout season 2025. In the meantime, mate, enjoy your return to Queensland. Enjoy Christmas mm. with the family. We appreciate you being on the run home with Joel and Fletch. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. See you, Benny.